Science 3, Quarter 4, Week 5 Today, we are going to study the safety and precautionary measures in dealing with different types of weather. Learning competency with code. The learners should be able to enumerate and practice safety and precautionary measures in dealing with different types of weather. The Philippines is often visited by typhoons. We should take necessary precautions when there is a typhoon. The Pagasa or the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical Astronomical Services Administration warns any approaching weather disturbances by using the following storm signals. Did you know? In 2015, Pagasa adopted the storm signal number 5. Let's learn about these storm signals. Signal number 1. A tropical cyclone will threaten or affect an area. Winds of 30 to 60 km per hour is expected. Intermittent rains may be expected in at least 36 hours. When the tropical cyclone intensifies and moves closer, this warning signal number may be upgraded. The waves on coastal waters may gradually develop and swell. The people are advised to listen to the latest severe weather bulletin issued by Pagasa every 6 hours. How about signal number 2? A tropical cyclone will affect an area. Winds of greater than 61 km per hour and up to 120 km per hour may be expected in at least 24 hours. The public, especially people traveling by sea and air, are cautioned. Outdoor activities of children should be postponed. Secure properties before the signal is upgraded. Signal number 3. A strong typhoon will affect an area. Winds of greater than 121 km per hour up to 170 km per hour may be expected in at least 18 hours. Travel is very risky, especially by air and sea. People are advised to seek shelter in strong buildings, evacuate low-lying areas, and stay away from the coast and river banks. Classes in all levels should be suspended and children should stay in the safety of strong buildings. How about signal number 4? A very strong typhoon will affect the area. Very strong winds of greater than 171 km per hour up to 220 km per hour may be expected in at least 12 hours. As the eye of the typhoon approaches, the weather will worsen continuously, with winds increasing to its strongest coming generally from the north. The situation is potentially very destructive to the community. All travels and outdoor activities should be cancelled. Evacuation to safer shelters should have been completed. Signal number 5 
We had this in the year 2013 with the Super Typhoon Yolanda. An intense super typhoon will affect the area. Intense winds of more than 220 km per hour may be expected in at least 12 hours. The situation is potentially extremely destructive or catastrophic to the community. All travels and outdoor activities should be cancelled. Evacuation to safer shelters should have been completed since it may have been too late for this situation. Shelters should be made of concrete and above ground over the storm surge level of typhoon. The Pag-asa also released the color-coded rainfall advisories. We have the yellow warning, which indicates awareness. Orange warning means preparedness. And red warning means emergency. Evacuation must be done. In the event of flooding, Tell your parents to coordinate with the local government unit to find out the identified evacuation areas in your community. Some ailments are associated with certain kinds of weather. During summer or prolonged sunny days, there may be high incidences of chicken pox, measles, prickly heat, and sore eyes. Let's discuss them one by one. Chicken pox often starts with fever and chills. When you have chicken pox, stay away from people because they may get infected. It affects both young and adult. When you have it, your face, arms, back, and chest become covered with blisters. Next, we have measles. Measles are accompanied by colds and coughs. People who have it also develop fever and skin rashes on the face, arms, chest, and back. When the rashes begin to dry, the skin feels itchy. What do we call this ailment? Very good. This is prickly heat. It is marked by small and itchy rushes, especially on the forehead, neck, and back. It is a skin disease common in babies and young children. It occurs when the sweat glands get plugged with dead skin cells or bacteria. Sore eyes can be transmitted by touching of eye with hands that got into contact with contaminated objects. Are your eyes red and itchy? If they are, you might have sore eyes. How do you prevent the spread of conjunctivitis or sore eyes? Wash your hands often with soap and warm water. If soap and water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% of alcohol. And lastly, avoid touching or rubbing your eyes. During fine or warm days, people must wear thin clothes and shorts. We also use fans to keep ourselves cool. We wear sunglasses to protect our eyes from the glaring sun. 
Some use cups or visors to protect them from the heat of the sun. During rainy or cold days, we wear thick clothes such as sweaters or jackets. Umbrellas or raincoats are also used for protection. Do not wet in the rain. You might catch a cold or a fever. Now, let's have some activities. The activity 1. Take this challenge. Choose the letter that corresponds to the correct answer. Number 1. Why is it not advisable to go out during stormy weather? Why is it not advisable to go out during stormy weather? A. Strong winds and heavy rains may experience on this day. B. Some places may be flooded. C. We see lightning and thunder. D. All of the above are correct. Number 2. What will you wear to protect your eyes from the heat and light of the sun? What will you wear to protect your eyes from the heat and light of the sun? A. Mittens B. Sunglasses C. Boots D. Necklace Number 3. What to wear on cloudy days to protect yourself? What to wear on cloudy days to protect yourself? A. Some clothes during summer may be worn. B. Heavy warm clothes. C. Wear thick clothes. D. None of the above. Number 4. What is the best thing to do during stormy weather? What is the best thing to do during stormy weather? A. Listen to the radio for weather updates. B. Do not stay inside the house. C. Eat hamburgers. D. All of this. Number 5. Which activity is good to do during rainy days? Which activity is good to do during rainy days? A. Fly kites. B. Go fishing with your cousins. C. Play games with friends in the park. D. Read books with your siblings. Activity number 2. Now I know. Do a happy face if the statement is an appropriate practice. If not, draw a sad face. Number 1. Go fishing on a stormy day. Go fishing on a stormy day. Happy face or sad face? 2. Use an umbrella, raincoat, and rubber boots on a rainy day. Use an umbrella, raincoat, and rubber boots on a rainy day. Happy face or sad face? Number 3. Prepare emergency lights and food on a stormy day. Prepare emergency lights and food on a stormy day. Happy face or sad face? 
Number 4. Eat nutritious and balanced food to be free from sickness during different weather conditions. Eat nutritious and balanced food to be free from sickness during different weather conditions. Happy face or sad face? Number 5. Always have a hot or an umbrella to protect yourself from the heat of the sun. Always have a hut or an umbrella to protect yourself from the heat of the sun. Happy face or sad face? Activity 3. I am ready. List one safety precautions of the following weather conditions. Least one safety precautions of the following weather conditions. Sunny day, cloudy day, windy day, rainy day, stormy day, and snowy day.